Oh my right, guys, you know what time it is. Ain't no post-apocalyptic virus that's gonna stop us from making these games. I am your host, Chad Chanson, and if you're ready to come on a journey with me, we're gonna pump these pecs, blast these buns, let's get this game train started. Three, two, one, party's begun. Let's go! Greetings from day two of lockdown. We're all good, except for the fact that I can't do anything. Both my gym and my climbing gym have been officially closed down. But fear not, because your boy Vitrune Physique, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. This is actually really interesting because this gives me an opportunity to kind of fulfill one of my lifelong dreams. Guys, I've got two kind of like fitness inspirations in my life. Uh, well, maybe three. You got Goku, you got Arnold Schwarzenegger, like pretty much 95% of you watching this video. And number three, this guy realistically, like Goku and you know Arnold, they kind of motivated me, but this person was the first guy who really kind of introduced me to fitness, introduced me to how to structure and how to work out, you know, chest, shoulders, triceps, you know, these are exercises. Tony Horton. Uh, the creator of P90X. Hey everybody, welcome to Chest and Back, the mother of all P90X workouts. The first like actual training, split training program that I ever followed way back in high school when I was 16, working out in my basement. Working out, I might add, with pretty much no equipment. And that, guys, is what I wanna, I wanna show you guys today. I am going to walk you through a full pretty much exclusively body weight, no equipment necessary. We're not even talking about dumbbells, pull-up bars, pretty much nothing that the average person doesn't have in their own house. Honestly, the only things that you guys are gonna require to complete this entire workout are number one, a chair, maybe two chairs, depending on your experience level, something with a little bit of weight. In my case, I'm using a three, maybe four pound book. That's it, you can use uh, like a jug of water, you, maybe like a tub of protein powder. Honestly, anything which is just a few pounds, that's all you're going to need. And the last thing I want to mention is that although we've got nine exercises and we're going to be running through them each one by one, taking maybe like 30, 45, 60 second break in between at the very most, depending on how tired you are, depending on your experience level, after those nine exercises, we're going to take like a five minute break and then do it all over again. So essentially it's nine exercises, two rounds and each exercise going to pretty much like 90% of failure almost max reps and that's it okay enough talk let's get started okay guys let's get this started first exercise chest you know we can't start any basic body weight you stay there it's got to be the push-up now i want to introduce three different variations of doing the push-up depending on your experience level because obviously in the gym if you're not that good you just decrease the weight when you're training with body weights it's kind of hard to do that so what we have to do is we have to introduce exercise variations increasing difficulty by doing small in this case minor variations just depending on you know using something as simple as a chair or you leaning up against something you propping your feet different minor exercise manipulations which are going to make the exercise more and more difficult depending on your experience level so in this case the intermediate level is going to be just you know regular floor body weight push-ups now if you're kind of like not that great you're not that experienced maybe you have a high a uh, high body weight uh, in this case one th exercise manipulation that you can do and make this significantly easier i would probably say somewhere around 20 to 30 percent easier would be uh, to perform the regular push-up except do it inclinated you can use this using a chair you can you do this on like a desk on a bookshelf anything at all which is going to allow you to put your hands around two to three feet higher than your feet you know off the ground is going to make this exercise a little bit easier so now maybe you're the opposite maybe you're like you know what even regular push-ups are too easy i don't want to be working out like 50 60 100 reps because that's the only way that you know that I could even break a sweat when it comes to the push-up so you actually do the opposite they call it decline push-ups because your body is essentially on a decline compared to your actual feet. But this is kind of interesting because although your body is in a de declinated, is that a word? Decline position, it's actually working out, it's kind of like an incline bench press because it's primarily focusing a little bit more on your upper chest. In my case, I am going to be doing the decline push-ups and uh, yeah, let's get started. <laughs> Oh 
feeling it. I can really kind of, yeah, I can definitely feel that a little bit more on my upper chest. Kind of like I'm essentially doing an incline bench press just with my body weight. Now, we're gonna be resting around 30 seconds or so in between. The goal of this, we can't, like in the gym, when you're working out, and especially doing heavy compound exercises. You know, usually when I'm in the gym, you're doing stuff like the squat, you know, the bench press, the incline bench press, the deadlift, these heavy compound barbell free weight exercises. Usually I will advocate resting a little bit more because it's going to allow you to lift more weight, get more volume, overall increase total work capacity. So if you rest two, three, four, hell, when I go really heavy, I might be resting five minutes in between sets. That's understandable because you're lifting a lot of weight. Again, that's how you increase intensity. Here, we can't increase intensity just by increasing body weight, as I've mentioned like 10 times already in this video. So one of the ways we do it, in addition to increasing the volume, increasing the number of reps, is we also decrease that, uh, that rest period in between. So honestly, right now, 30, maybe 60 seconds at the very most, that's about it. So in my case, I better hurry this up. All right, next up, shoulders. This one, once again, I'm going to be uh, providing you uh, three different versions, increasing gradually in difficulty. First exercise, this is called a regular pike press. So essentially what you wanna do is, it's almost kinda like, what's it, babe, what's, what's this one called, is it? This is downward dog, I always mix those two up. So essentially you wanna come sort of in a downward dog position with your hands slightly out in front of you, take your tiptoes, and you know, like pretty much get right up in there, trying to get your butt as high in the air as possible, and essentially right now what you are trying to replicate is kind of like a shoulder press except you are lifting uh, your body weight. So it's almost like a very weird crooked form of a push-up where you're essentially taking the resistance off of your chest and onto your anterior, your front deltoids. And it's pretty much just like, honestly, that's about it. Now, this is surprisingly, you know, it's not that easy. Maybe I've already been a little pre-exhausted by the push-ups, but if you wanna make it even a little bit more difficult, kinda of towards the intermediate level of the exercise, once again, just like with the push-ups, you can get your feet and raise your butt an additional two to three feet higher in the air, putting additional weight distribution onto your arms, onto your shoulders, and making the exercise even a little bit more difficult. So in this case, hands pretty much like around eye level, maybe just a little bit in front of you, and same concept. Now, for the majority of you, honestly, I think that's going to be enough. And this next exercise, even I am not that comfortable in doing it because I am a, mostly a gym-based bodybuilder. I don't do that much, you know, calisthenics, uh, body weight training at home. But this exercise does look kind of cool. And pretty much everyone's favorite anime character has done this at least once, you know, in each series. So we got to give it a try. Of course, we are doing handstand shoulder press. There are many ways of getting up to it. I am not a big fan of doing the one where you're pretty much like facing the door and you kick your feet back. I just do not have that much balance. And honestly, I really think I'm afraid of breaking through this door. So the way that I personally like to do it is take your hands and slowly walk your feet up. And essentially, you wanna be pretty much just like a foot or so, sorry, a meter or so in front of the door. And it pretty much becomes a shoulder press with your full body weight instead of doing the standard barbell press that you would in the gym. Now to be honest, that exercise, even for me as someone who in the past has overpressed as high as 200 pounds or more for, for, you know, for a few reps, even that is so challenging, not just in terms of its actual emphasis on the muscle and the stimulus, but just in terms of the overall athleticism of being able to you know, hold yourself up in that position, the stability that it takes. Even for me, I'm not a huge, you know, I don't think I'm at that level yet personally. So I'm going to be doing the incline pipe press. And again, you guys choose whatever exercise you feel most comfortable with. With that being said, I better hurry the hell up. Whew. 
All right, 30, 45 second break. One of the big benefits to body weight training, calisthenics in general, which you don't really get, at least not anymore when it comes to working out in the gym, is that it pretty much is at the same time resistance training, you know, stimulating hypertrophy and strength gains, but at the same time, because of the, the high speed of it, the low, the low rest periods, even the difficulty of some of these weird movements like the handstand, you know, shoulder press, all these things, it's going to make it a little bit more of like a cardio and endurance, almost the, kind of like bringing back that athleticism component, which I think is kind of missing from standard, typical, you know, three sets of 10 on the bicep curl, gym bro workouts. And I am guilty of this at times too. Sometimes I focus so much on how much I can lift in terms of reps or weight, I don't really focus on anything else. And there are times when I leave the gym having an awesome workout in terms of how much weight I lifted, but barely even breaking a sweat. Well, fortunately today, considering we're two exercises in and I'm already getting it going, yeah, that's not the case. All right, next exercise, triceps. You guys know what this one is. This is, I think besides push-ups, this is probably one of the most standard and effective uh, body weight workouts that you can do. We are going to be doing triceps dips uh, on the chair. So. Pretty much get your arms right underneath you, pretty much shoulder width apart, give or take. Your feet are out in front of you, and it becomes pretty much just a standard dip. Now, this one does get pretty easy for me personally. I mean, as someone who can regularly do 50 and 20 body weight dips in the gym, to be doing like around half my body weight or so, like with a chair, it does get a little a little bit too easy. So one thing that you could actually do to make this exercise a little bit more difficult is increase the amount of weight that you are lifting, the amount of your body that you are supporting by, babe, I'm gonna need that chair right about now. <laughs> Introducing a second point to elevate your feet. In this case, I'm just gonna be taking two chairs. Pretty much the name of the game, so far as you guys can tell, the more of your body weight that is elevated, the more you are lifting, the more difficult the exercise becomes, you know, whether it be elevating your feet when you're doing decline push-ups, or in this case, the double chair dips. <sighs> ah, ooh, actually gives a, you know, for a body weight workout, that's a, it's a pretty damn good tricep burn. Another 45, 60 second break. All right, so we just did chest, shoulders, triceps. Now we're gonna start repeating it, going back to our second chest exercise. By the way, guys, if you guys are interested, as always, my protein, this is a pre-workout. It's their My Pre Blue Raspberry flavor, which is my personal favorite. And sometimes what I actually do is combine it with about maybe a half a scoop or a scoop of their uh, clear whey isolate. That way it's almost like, kind of like intro workout protein. So instead of me waiting for the actual you know, workout to be over, when I get a protein shake or maybe I make myself a full meal, I say screw it. Pretty much while I'm working out, I'm already putting protein into my body. As always, if you guys are interested, VIT, VIP, the discount code, everything in the description box below. I'm gonna end my spiel there, but you guys know it's my favorite. All right, this one is going to be interesting. And once again, we have two different ways of doing this exercise. It's going to be, essentially, I wanna do a push-up, which is going to have a little bit more emphasis on either side at a time. Essentially, we were trying to make the push-up into, into more of a unilateral exercise where you're training one side of your body at a time. So the first version of this exercise, I like to call this side-to-side -side push-ups. To be honest, I don't really know the official name for half of these exercises, but essentially, instead of doing a standard push-up with an equal emphasis, uh, equal resistance, equal body weight on both of your pecs, we are going to be going as follows. So essentially, this almost becomes sort of like uh, somewhere between a regular and a one-arm push-up, where you are still, you know, you're still on both arms, but the emphasis is much more towards one side at a time. The other arm is still here, still kind of there to support a little bit of your body weight, but it's not actually providing that much of the actual, uh, the actual force pressing you off the ground anymore. This kind of puts like, I would say like 70 to 80% of the resistance on one peck at a time. You're pretty much gonna go just side to side, taking maybe like a second break in between at the top, and you're gonna do this for as many reps as possible. 
Now, if you're really feeling like a badass, and you know, once again, you've seen all your favorite anime characters do this, so you gotta give it a shot. At least for a few reps, you can do one arm push-up. The one thing I do wanna advocate when it comes to this exercise is be careful trying to do this exercise kind of like a standard push-up. You can't do that. With a regular push-up where your arms are straight and you're pretty much just like going down like that, it's not gonna work. You try to do that and you're, just, you're gonna lose your balance very quickly. So the biggest thing you have to make sure you do, get your legs nice and wide. It's pretty much like uh, instead of being two points of contact with the ground where you have actual no balance, it's kind of like you need to be sort of like a tricycle, big ass tripod. That's essentially what you need to do to actually stabilize yourself while you do this exercise. <laughs> Pretty damn hard. For a bodyweight exercise, yeah, that's, that's gonna make a man out of you. Or a woman. This one, honestly, I have never seen before. So to be honest, I had to kinda pretty much make it up as I was kinda putting this video together yesterday. But honestly, for the limited equipments, in this case, a book, that's, you know, be using just that, it's, uh, it's pretty decent. I call this one AL Bounces which essentially means anterior lateral bounces. And honestly, all it is is you take a weight. You don't need that much at all. This one's going to be a lot more reps, a little bit more volume and kind of like static isometric contraction. And that's going to make up for the fact that you don't have much weight. So what I want you to do is take it. We're gonna do this one arm at a time. And essentially all you have to do is you're gonna bring it up. We're gonna do straight in front of you and out to the side. Anterior deltoid, lateral deltoid. What you're going to be doing is raising it up and you're gonna be doing just these little bounces. That's it. And you're gonna do five. You're gonna bring it down, come out to the side and do five. And that's it. And all that, all that we just did, five and five, that was one rep. You can try to get as many as you can. I don't care how many you get, five, 10, 20, you can be here all day, but honestly, good luck getting 20. Remember guys, when it comes to working out, it's not just a matter of how much weight you're actually lifted, lifting. It's a matter of, you know, that stress you put on the muscle combined with total time under tension. So if you can't actually increase the tension, the actual resistance placed or lifted by your muscle because you don't have any weight, you can make up for this by just simply increasing the total time under tension. So each one of these reps, you know, when you're in the gym and you're kind of just doing these lateral raises, each rep takes you like a second. In this case, we're taking it, we're slowing it down, we're doing five, seven, you know, ish exercise, sorry, seconds per each individual rep. That's gonna make the exercise significantly more difficult. That's it, it just it's kind of like this, this isometric contraction happening in your anterior and lateral deltoids. And I'm on like what? This is like rep number four or five and I'm already, you know, these, suddenly these four or five pounds, ugh, they feel like four or 500. Oof. I remember when I was a kid, my gym teacher, he made us do this in grade nine. We did this with nothing. Oof. See, I'm done. We did this just with our bare hands, just with the weight of our arm. Remember your arm weighs a solid what? 20, 25, 30 pounds, or in my case, a bit more than that. It's a, it's a decent amount of weight to lift on its own. I want you to do this either in a neutral or pronated grip. So essentially like arms kind of like normal or kind of you know twisted clockwise. Don't do it like this. If you were to do it in a supinated grip, what it's really, it really kind of makes you want it. Your body likes to cheat. When your body's doing difficult things, it likes to cheat. It's gonna kind of try to stick, you know, your, your elbow, kind of stick your triceps underneath right here. There's a little pocket in your lap, sorry, in your lat. And you kind of just end up like sitting like this. You know, all the work is being done. There, there is no work being done because your arm, you can literally just go like that. And again, I can't even imagine doing this 
or like an actual 10 pound dumbbell or something. Oh, okay, that's enough. Oh, okay, like we're only about, we're not even halfway in. And right now, my shoulders, my triceps, even my chest to a certain extent, it feels like, it just feels like jello. Next exercise, we got two versions in this case, two in one and three in one push-ups. And all it is, it's very simple. We are going to be alternating between regular push-ups and slightly close grip military push-ups. Uh, if you guys don't really know what that is, watch very closely. One thing I don't want you guys doing uh, incorrectly is assuming that, okay, when I do wide push-ups, they're kind of like out here, pretty much just like if I were to like put my eyes down, my hands are just be a little bit below that line. And then you think, okay, fine. Well, that's regular push-ups, you know, with my arms out in front, a little bit below eye level. Tricep, you know, close grip, military push-ups are the same thing. So they're gonna be just like this. And then this is just this, this awkward thing where you don't even really know where to go. No, when it comes to military push-ups, I highly recommend you lower your hands down a little bit, you know, about six to eight inches below what you normally do uh, the actual hand level of regular push-ups and your elbows are tucked in nice and close. So if regular push-ups are kind of like out here with your arms out sort of at a 45 degree angle, give or take, your uh, military push-ups are pretty much like right here. Like the actual angle to your body is zero because your elbows are tucked right in here. And this is going to put a little bit of additional emphasis on your actual triceps. And the way I want you to do it is essentially do five and five. You pretty much keep on switching every five reps. And at the end, whatever your total is, that's how many you got. So it will kind of look like this. One, two, three, four, five. And you come in nice and tight. One, two, three, four, five. Again, my elbows and uh, my hands are pretty damn low. So my hands are now out here. They're kind of right here. They're pretty much directly underneath my elbows. Now, this is perfectly fine, but if you want to introduce to something to make it a little bit more challenging, give it a little bit more variety, you make it a three in one, you introduce the wide push up. Now, when you're doing the wide push up, understand that when I say wide, I mean maybe around four to five inches wider than the regular push up. I don't want you guys coming here and trying to do this weird, like, chest fly crap where your arms are pretty much almost fully straight because that's essentially impossible. So, in my case, we're gonna be doing it wide. Coming in a bit. No one more. Ow. Uh, that's probably like 30 or so in total. Some people think like, oh, body weight training is for, you know, come on. It's, it's for guys who can't even bench press like one plate at the gym. You know, in some cases that may be. But in many cases, the guys who can bench two, 250, 300 in the gym, you tell them to come and do a, a solid, just, just a few sets of push-ups to max reps, and within five minutes, they're gonna be on fire, they're gonna be huffing and puffing, they're gonna be sweating buckets, and uh, yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's a different kind of difficulty than you experience just with regular gym-based weight training. And honestly, I think it's a good idea to have a combination of both, both styles of training. You don't wanna be one or the other. Okay, next up, triceps. This one, this is an old school one I remember from P90X way back in like 2006, 2007, whenever it, uh, whenever it came out. So essentially I want you to lie down on your side, take your, the hand that's closest to the ground, put it right here, pretty much on the, on the back of your shoulder, tuck your other arm right here, and essentially what you're going to be doing is almost like doing a push-up on the side where the force is gonna be coming from right through this arm and the force is going to be coming through your tricep as you extend your arm so it kind of looks like this make sure that when you're doing this exercise you don't have your hand down here because that just anatomically is not going to work and it's also not super high up which is going to decrease your range of motion to pretty much just like what two or three inches at the very most, pretty much right around here, right under where your elbow is about to be. Now, it's not gonna be the exact same for everyone. You can move up or down one, two inches, not the end of the world. Again, just nothing up here, nothing down here, right around elbow level. And again, max rep. Oh, 
surprisingly difficult. This next one, this one's gonna be a bit interesting. What I want you to do is go into your house and find anything at all which is going to allow you to slide, ideally on a hard surface. If you have carpet, don't do it. You need something, ideally hardwood floor, maybe marble, something which is nice and smooth, something which is going to allow you to slide because what we are going to be trying to emulate is kind of like a, in the gym, be a dumbbell fly or a chest, a cable fly. We're going to be essentially trying to replicate that except kind of as a modification to the standard uh, push-up form. One of the things, one of the reasons why you want to do this is when it comes to your chest, a lot of people don't understand. They inaccurately or erroneously believe that the main function of the chest is a push. And this is what it does, right? Because that's a push-up, that's a bench press, that's a dumbbell press. But when you actually look at the main function of your chest, the, the main function of the pec, it's to pretty much bring your arm across the body. It's this. That's why technically when it comes to sort of flying movements, that's the real main uh, function of what the pecs are anatomically uh, supposed to do. They're supposed to adduct the arm across the body. Adduction, abduction, close away. And uh, so when you're doing it, you know, any kind of pushing mechanism like a bench press or a, or, or a push up, they're great, but the problem is your hands kind of end up here and you lose kind of that last 15, 20% of bringing your arms across the body. And that's when you really get that maximum, you know, that contraction, that tension in between your pecs. So this is a good way of trying to, kind of trying to bring that back in to the actual push up exercise. Okay, so what I want you to do is get down into a regular push up position. Put one hand into something that slides. Again, in my case, I'm using a regular styrofoam plate. Other people use a piece of paper. They can use a rag. You can use a paper towel. I don't care as long as it's slippery and it slides with minimal resistance. That's going to be good. Make sure you do something that doesn't break. And then all you have to do as you come down, you slide away. And then at the top, not only do you come in, but you actually try to slide your arms all the way, pretty much almost to the point where your thumbs are kind of like, they're kissing a little bit. And then right here, that's when you get that maximal contraction. That's when you get that additional, those extra 12, you know, 12, 18 inches where you bring your arms together, that extra contraction. That's what makes this really awesome and even a little better than the typical regular push up. Four and five. Now I'm gonna be doing this and switching hands pretty much every five reps. You can do it every two reps, every three reps, whatever it is, leave it up to you and your own personal experience level. reps in my case around 10 per side people are saying like oh Igor what am I gonna do my gym is closed I'm in quarantine or I'm in lockdown for weeks for maybe even more than a month am I gonna lose all my gains and I'm thinking bullshit you do a couple of these every week you get at least a decent intake of protein and you're not just gonna maintain your muscle hell you can put on a bit of muscle. You can put, you can come out of this a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, especially compared to all the other people who are going to use this as like, well, that's it. Quarantine. It can't do anything. I wish I can go to the gym, but I can't, I can't do this. I can't do that. So they sit on their ass eating pop tarts and microwave pizzas. They come out of this quarantine five pounds heavier in fat, two pounds later in muscle. And they're like, it's not my fault. Bullshit. Yes, it is. Last exercise for this round. This one's going to be relatively similar to the one that we just did from a lateral deltoid standpoint. But uh, instead of us actually like doing multiple reps and bouncing, it's going to be one rep. One long ass rep. This is going to be essentially utilizing a lot more of what I mentioned earlier, that isometric contraction. Remember guys, when you're in the gym, there are three ways of stimulating. There are three ways of contracting your muscle. You got your typical concentric, which is kind of like, you know, the way up, 
Then you've got your eccentric, which is kind of like the way down, or what some people refer to as the negative. And then you've got your isometric, which is pretty much you put your muscle into a point of contraction, usually halfway through whatever exercise you are doing, and you kind of just hold it there. And being able to stabilize yourself here and keep that weight up, that's actually going to be a pretty decent exercise in and of itself without you actually doing it. Remember guys, the name of the game is time under tension. What we're going to be doing is taking you know, our little weight, again, three, four, five pounds, it does not have to be that much. If you think it's too late, you think you're too strong, then hold it longer. And you just kind of come out and that's it. Again, neutral, pronated position, not supinated, not hands up, and you just hold it and you want to do this for as long as possible. 30 seconds, 60 seconds, hell, I don't care if you're here for five minutes. Good luck doing it for five minutes. And that's it. Do not let your hands drop. I don't want to see you guys doing this 30 seconds in. I don't want to see you guys doing that because that's no longer working your lateral deltoid. Nice 90 degrees with your body, with your torso, and kind of hold it there, that lateral deltoid isometric contraction. I personally like to do it in pronated, so palms facing down. And yeah, that's 30 seconds and already that's getting pretty damn hard. Uh, uh, I remember, I'll try to find a photo of this. This is like 2014. Hello, baby girl. My first ever bodybuilding expo. I went to like the Toronto Pro Super Show. This is the first time I ever met all the greats. I met Ronnie Coleman, Dorian Yates, all these guys back when I was really into not just fitness, but like hardcore bodybuilding. I remember there was like this one event. They were doing like a protein giveaway. And the goal was they're gonna give you a bag of protein. This wasn't that much, it wasn't like five pounds of protein. And the goal was to stand there with both arms out with a bag of protein in each arm and hold it for as long as possible. And I of course did not know, I never tried this. I came there and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do this for five minutes. I do lateral raises with 30s or, or 40s or whatever I did at the time. This is gonna be easy. I got like maybe like a minute and a half and that was fresh, not like now. And at the end of the day, I came back, there was like a whiteboard and I wasn't even top 10. So uh, definitely was a, a little bit of a wake up call for someone who thought like, please, I can do this all day. Apparently not. All right guys, and all of that is halfway. We just finished one round of two. Now, the goal is to take a nice, decent break. You know, we don't have to, you know, it's not going to be like 30 seconds or something. We take a nice five minute break, you know, loosen up the shoulders, loosen up the triceps, get a drink of water and do what you got to do. You know, try to relax a little bit, get that heart rate down just a little bit because it's going right back up in about five minutes. We are about to do everything all over again. The only difference this time, there are two differences. Number one is obviously you're going to be probably doing you know, slightly less reps, slightly being the keyword. If you got 40 reps on push-ups the first round, I don't want to see you going down to 15 this second rep, you know, this second round. And number two is if you feel that you, you, know, you need it, it's kind of getting hard, maybe it's a little bit more difficult than you thought you signed up for, you can uh, decrease or downgrade to a slightly easier version of the exercise. If you did, you know, standing, uh, standing shoulder press the first time, you can drop down to the pipe press or the elevated pipe press. If you did the decline push-ups, you can drop down to regular or incline push-ups. If you did, you know, the double chair dips, you can drop it down, put your legs down, do the slightly easier uh, version of the chair dips. Do what you got to do. I don't care. Just don't give up. Don't finish, you know, be like, that's it. You know, one round is good enough. I did, you know, I got half a workout. Bullshit. Half a workout, half muscle. We're not doing that today. Not here, not on my channel, not with this video. By the way, for anyone out there who's like, well, I can't do this, right? You know, like even doing a body weight workout at home is kind of difficult. Maybe you, you're in a college dorm. Maybe you live with your parents. Maybe you don't have that much room. Let me make this perfectly clear for you. I live in a 790 square foot box. This is my office. This is my desk. I got my computer right here. You don't need that much room. I literally, I had to put my office chair into a bathroom. So if I can make it work with this 10 by 11 square foot box, which is 50% taken up by a bookshelf and a desk, then you can make this work wherever you are. All right, let's get started. Round two, listen, I've already explained everything, so this time, less talking, more doing. We're gonna do this one nice and quick. Cut those rest periods down. You guys know the drill. 
let's get started. This time I'm going to be doing regular push-ups because to be honest, I kind of kicked my own ass explaining every single exercise up until now. So let's get started. Thirty-eight, not bad. This time, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a little bit easier and do the regular pike press. No need, at least in this case, to do the elevation. Nice and high on your tiptoes, arms a little bit out in front. Let's go. While I'm resting here, I got about 20 seconds or so. How do you guys like my plant collection? More importantly, which is your favorite cactus? I pride myself on having that cactus for over a year. That's right. It's the one plant I have for 12 months that I haven't killed yet. So I'm counting on you, big guy. Let's get started. Chair dips. I'm gonna do this one with my feet on the ground because I don't want to make my lovely girlfriend get off her chair. <laughs> like... And yes, for those of you guys who are wondering, Igor, why don't you just go get a, a third chair? Trick question. I don't have one. <laughs> Ah. Ooh. Honestly guys, I gotta be honest. Honestly guys, I gotta be honest. Did I mention I'm honest? You should do this way faster than I did originally. Hopefully I'll cut it down and I'll edit it to be a lot more the real pace that I want. But because I was explaining everything and showing you three different versions of every exercise, that first round took me like 45 minutes, when honestly it should be less than half of that. So in this case, do as I say, not necessarily as I do. Okay, again, anterior lateral bounces. Let's get to it. Oh, thank you, Arnold's Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. Uh, okay, two and one push-ups. Let's go. I'll be doing the two and one, not the three and one. You guys want to do the three and one with the wide? You go right ahead. You gotta take breaks. That's okay if you can get a little bit more. That's all right. Ugh. Ow! Oh, that was real failure. I felt my arms give out on that one. 
half a second too late, I would have busted up my nose into my own floor. Feels good though. Feels real good. Whew. All right, size triceps. Uh, tricep push, let's go. We got the flies. Time to get our very, very fancy, patented, specific fitness equipment. Guys, this is the Vitruvian Physique uh, PEC 9000 PEC Stimulus device. I'll be selling these for only three easy payments of $99.99. Right now available at www.bullshit.com. Along with my assortment of test boosters and dick enlargement pills. Couple more, come on. Stay with me. We're like 90, 95% done. Okay, lateral hold, home stretch. Let's go. Arms out and hold. Took it at the exact same place, down to the actual rock, pretty much, where Arnold took a photo. I believe this was the 1980 Olympia in Sydney, Australia, which actually he ended up winning, by the way. A very controversial win, but one which I think he still he still narrowly did. Personally, I believe he did deserve it. And uh, some people were like, Igor, why'd you post the same photo twice? And I'm like, I don't know, but if you look closely, Things might not always be as they appear. It's very minor differences though. I have a slightly better haircut. <laughs> uh. All right guys, that, that is it. Nine exercises, max reps, pretty much two rounds. Total number of reps, Hell, I don't know, but it's got to be easily over, you know, four or five hundred. 
All right, guys, that's it for me. I'm ending this one right here. If you like this video, make sure to actually like the video, subscribe, comment down below. Definitely let me know if you enjoy this video, if you found it helpful, and uh, maybe I'll do more like this. I'll do like a full, you know, back and biceps, rear shoulders, kind of like a pull workout, a leg workout, maybe a full body workout, all these things. I'm trying to, you know, kind of try to help you as much as I can during this weird time in all of our lives. But until then, stay at home, sit on your ass, be safe. And you know what, that's okay. We got Netflix, we got Final Fantasy VII the Remake coming out in two weeks. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think we're all gonna be okay. Until then, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.